Welcome back everyone to another exciting Duckman Cycles and VW Garage video. We're back today with the Mo Kart and we're here to discuss a couple of special fan requests. Often my fan requests are very silly or nonsensical and often I get later crabbed at if I'm not demonstrating or, or at least addressing them. Other requests are just so bad or poorly timed I often just ignore them or shoot them down on the spot, but here is one such request you can see, but we're going to get back to that later on in this video. So hey Darkman, why don't you just mount the battery under the steering wheel? Yeah, let me just go backwards and eliminate the nice hidden battery box that I've already created and clutter up the look of this thing completely by putting the battery out in the open. Yeah, that looks great, doesn't it? Hey Duckman, if you just install a centrifugal clutch, it'll save you a ton of work having to create a manual clutch. Then you can run a chain so you don't need pulleys. Yeah, let's just go ahead and replace the manual clutch and pulleys that I've already made. These things give me a lot more control than any centrifugal clutch ever could. The manual clutch, by the way, was a rather fun bit to create. It's mostly all original mower parts just disassembled and reinstalled in a different order. I added an extra spring to return the pulley back to position, and there really isn't much force required to move this, so I only used a beetle throttle cable with a Z-hook on the clutch end, with a bicycle outer wire cut to length, and a mower handlebar mount for the cable up front. The pedals are actually just stock mower pedals, and inserted directly through the frame and allowed to turn in the central coupler. I will probably weld this coupler in later, but at this point it seems to be working well. The end of the cable is secured by a VW throttle cable holdfast, the same bit that you'd use on your heater cables, or even the throttle cable back on your carburetor. Real simple stuff here, guys. Normally at this point in a project, I don't even address things like trim work. But I keep getting Dumb asked, shit. so here it comes. Duckman, where's the fenders? Even more well, I suppose some fenders could be practical. It would be really nice to keep the mud and dirt off of me when driving this thing, but I still feel it should wait. But only because the bodywork was requested dozens of times over the last few weeks, I thought I should take a minute to satisfy all of my fans. So I got to cutting at the fingers to get the newest mower. Maybe I can get it to wrap the frame and sit nice and low on. on the tire so it doesn't look like a crack. Well, right. let's just see how it looks. Some of you asked for bodywork. I always say trim comes last. So many of you insisted you wanted to see fenders on here. So let's see if I can give you guys some kind of fenders. That's the original lawnmower stuff. I don't really like it. Not quite. Needs a little more out of it. Kind of a lot more out of it. <laughs> this needs to fit down tighter over the frame. I can't express how much I hate doing this at this time because <laughs> trim work, which is what this is, should be coming last. I shouldn't even be touching any of this until the end. The stuff like the bodywork on this is really all an afterthought. I don't need bodywork on it to make it run or make it ride. In everybody's best interest now, if you want to see this thing get done, this mark didn't end up on here. If you just want to see it get done, I gotta work on the, uh, the drive chain stuff, not bodywork. As I just got done saying, this is what you guys want to see. Well, here it is. <laughs> By viewer demand. Okay. Let's see. Well, this could work. This could work. Obviously, I gotta take a big piece out of the middle to drop this way down because that'd be kind of neat to even retain this if I could. I'm just eyeballing stuff. I don't know what's gonna work and what isn't. <laughs> let's uh, let's try. 
try trimming up to uh, way up in here. Let's see what happens. if I can keep the cup holder. Be nice to put a bigger one in there even so I can drop in my Yeti. <laughs> hey guys, hold my beer. And I'm not even a redneck. Imagine that. All right, well. Let's see what more we can do. Before I go any further, let's just take this off of here and see the rear fenders that were on the other mower that I tore down and see how they look. All right. That's a pretty close fit. These bolt holes here should actually line up with these bolt holes down there, but it does not stretch over the subframe that I put in there. So if I were to do that, I'd have to put a relief cut up through here, which isn't hard. And we could try that right now. And come up through here, run a cut across the front, drop it down. And if those bolts go into there, that's a good mounting point. This here, I'll take these screws out, I'll weld in a patch, and then I could uh, just smooth it out, typical Bondo, you know, a little body work. Don't need to be anything fancy, I mean, it's a freaking mo cart. Okay. Got a pretty good cut put on here. Bolt holes now line up, but <laughs> the fenders are now resting on the tires. Yeah, low rider. <laughs> okay, kind of kind of low, which looks kind of cool, but I want to give a little more clearance than that. That's uh, that's not too much. I mean, it has no working suspension, so the wheels and the ride height is pretty static. It may flex a little bit, but I want maybe maybe an inch, and I suppose I could just lift it up a little bit and get what I need. Just put them on an angle. That could be done. Nice that the bolt holes line up up front. There's actually room to get the battery out, but now I can't get the seat in because this is up way too high. You see that? It's up a lot higher than the frame. So that means I'll have to clearance it for the seat. So I put the seat in there. That'll give me an idea where I gotta make my cut all the way around. And then it's not gonna clear the engine. <laughs> you see where this is going. Okay, so I'll have to cut out some clearance for the engine as well, which pretty much means cut it right along this line and straight down the back, because everything needs to slot in between it. And actually, looking at the top here, it's right on the, uh, the swedge line here. It's pretty much where I need to cut out. Yeah, right along here and notch it. So I get in there with a Sharpie, make some marks, and start sawing this puppy apart. It looks like the rearmost part here, I'm gonna have to um, probably weld or bolt to the frame. In fact, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't cut it on this line. Maybe I should fold it on that line and fold this under and use these holes as the bracket to mount it to the frame. Now that makes practical sense. Make a square cut here, square cut here, cut out that, cut out this way, and then fold it right on this wedge line. Back here where the engine's gonna go, yeah, I need a lot of clearance back here. Nothing much is really gonna work unless I, I cut the crap out of this. Um, the seat is actually gonna go right up about there. Yeah, it's about as far forward as it's gonna go. But it does need to fit in between those wedge lines, which shouldn't be a problem. Once I bend that uh, under, it'll make a lot more clearance. And it doesn't need to have but maybe eighth of an inch on each side. It's doable. It's doable. Not bad for a set of fenders on here though. It'll keep the mud off of me. 
Now I need to come up with something for the front too. But the rear, I think that probably would work better. They're a little bit bigger and it would have given me a little more coverage towards the back. But I'm really not worried about hitting people behind me with stones and such. So I think we'll be okay. I guess it needs to be a little more centered. Move that over a bit. There we go. Yeah, nothing's permanent yet. <laughs> we got lots to play with. All right, that turned out to be a lot of cuts, huh? But it fits pretty well. Not too bad at all. Still need to clearance the back, so that way the engine, whether it be the Volkswagen engine or the Briggs & Stratton engine, needs to um, clear that. They're not too bad the way they are. I got about, about an inch of clearance up underneath there. That's enough. Again, no suspension travel. So that looks like it's uh, gonna work out pretty well. And then of course when the seat is folded up and out of the way, everything is still accessible and easy to get to. And that's what I'm saying, there's a little too much room between the frame and that uh, bracket. I suppose I could Z-bend Z it and make it fit in there, but I don't wanna do that. I don't think it'll give me enough metal to be able to bolt it to the, uh, the frame. Some of that is rusted. Over on this side, it's not nearly as bad, but still, we're just not gonna do it that way. And of course, I gotta cut the back. I guess I'll cut it right about here and then fold that under, so that way it continues the shape of the fender. I kinda like it wrapping, wrapping the frame. I mean, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just cut it here and slot the engine in. Or maybe I'll just slot the engine in and figure out where I need to cut it, so that way it conforms to the engine as closely as possible. Although I got a feeling I'm probably gonna wind up cutting all of it out. <laughs> the conformity of the engine might just be, you know, a kind of a round cut through here. <laughs> all right, there's our fender set. It was a lot of, a lot of cuts went into that, a lot of bending of metal. I hope that it clears the seat based on the measurements that I threw on there. It's pretty damn close. It should drop right in here and it does. Then I need to, well, either bolt it in or clamp it down. Well, I've got some, some vice grips out here. Let's see if I can get that in place. All right, I pulled it, slapped it, tugged it, and rubbed it. And it looks like we got a little more than an inch, which is pretty good. I actually rather like the shape of all that. I mean, it doesn't look too mowerish. I don't think it looks too mowerish at all. Pull this down from here and get a good look at the whole thing. Yeah, I think if I cover up the, uh, the shifter hole in the fender here and the, uh, well, actually that was the deck hole and the shifter hole on this side I fill them in, I think it'll look a lot less mowerish. So I'm not trying to do some type of lawnmower races here or some stupid shit like that. This is actually supposed to be a go-kart. But I think that'll do a pretty good job of keeping the mud and crap off of the rider. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. Okay, good. Needs to come up a little more on this side as I don't have that inch and a half or so that's over here, so I need to move it some. No big deal, but what we're gonna do is we'll drop some bolts in there on both sides. We'll bend this up a little more, and then I'll bash out the sides of these things with a hammer and a saw and just get them moved. And then I'll start welding the fenders together and then preparing some brackets to figure out where that needs to be. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and drop the engine on there and see how well it clears all this stuff. Well, that's pretty damn close. The mower engine needs to go back considerably from where it's at, or I should say forward, because this exhaust was pretty close to the frame, about finger distance. This throttle cable shouldn't be tucked under the engine. Though. There we go, now it's sitting flat. All right, well, 
we do need the clearance cut but not as much as I might have thought I guess we'll come up to about here and cut out a slot and that means we leave the fenders as one piece which I kind of like one piece is good so that holds everything together I don't have to do as much uh, brackets and mounts and all that other crap to stop them from wobbling okay well let's make some adjustments all right that gives me I think the room that I need almost may have to cut it just a little bit more but as a side effect since the rest of the fender still goes straight down vertically now I have a mounting attachment to attach the fender in the back so I may not even need the inside on here I might just form these and be done with it and leave it alone everything else otherwise looks pretty damn good and of course to get my height that I need I just got to bring that bracket up you know just an inch or so because it's just barely touching the tires now where it sits so that's not too bad now the engine should be able to go forward and it did it's right up against the fender I may actually need to clearance it just a little bit more but that's not a problem I think I can cut into it about another inch or so before I'm really gonna have any kind of issue but uh, I, I just really like the way this is turning out <laughs> not bad at all not bad at all now I've got some type of mud protection while we're riding keeps the mud off the sides of your pants never mind the front end but I guess we'll figure that out <laughs> maybe we'll put those on backwards just for grins because somebody will probably tell me that's what I should do let's put it on there and just see what it looks like <laughs> now it just turned into like a car that's really weird I kind of like it what I need is I need another one of these and put that up front so that way the style matches but it almost looks like it's got like pontoon fenders for headlights that is incredible wow that's really not bad at all well there is another set of fenders like this they're right there on that tractor so I suppose I could steal those and uh, toss it right on here and see what happens but yeah that actually looks kind of cool never mind foot room I have no foot room doing that because my feet actually come way over in here somewhere what I need to do is cut a notch out of this and level off the floor so that way I have a little more room for my feet because that makes the uh, my feet a little too high but we're on to something. <laughs> That's kind of neat. That's actually kind of neat. Now this is the part of the video that everyone has been waiting for. I can't begin to tell you how many people requested to see a Volkswagen engine mounted up on this mo-kart. The answer from me has been overwhelmingly no. But it just keeps getting asked so I have finally given in to my fans. Here's the Volkswagen engine and here's what it looks like up on the mo-kart. Now, if I were to do this, I would definitely leave the engine in the Volkswagen stock configuration. In other words, pulleys facing backwards. I would drive the transmission, which is belt driven, off of the pulley. I would set up a, uh, I would set up a Corvair type system that turns the belt into a three-dimensional uh, shape. So essentially, it doesn't just wrap around pulleys. It actually wraps around a pulley and then wraps under on some that are turned 90 degrees to go under here to attach to the transmission input right there. So this can all be belt driven. Put a stock flywheel on or, or a lightweight, you know, fast revving flywheel. I think that would be kind of cool. And uh, well, definitely just for weight savings alone because this is incredibly heavy. Now, no pranks here. You notice there's nothing here set up. I don't have any jack stands under it like I did to the ATVW. <laughs>
but just, uh, well, I'm not even gonna hook more than one finger under it. Here, watch. I can lift it right up. So, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, very, very front light. Now I can alleviate some of that by making some new axle brackets, which is what I had put on here, and moving them back to directly underneath the engine. So essentially lengthen my wheelbase, and I think that will eliminate a lot of the uh, light front weight problems. Uh, even if I were sitting on this, I still think it would just be tremendously front heavy. A dual port engine such as this is 50 horsepower. The uh, engine was 12 and a half that was on here previously, so it's four times the power, but it's also four times the weight. Now, a lot of this stuff is not impossible to do. Uh, yes, I can still drive a generator or an alternator. I'm just gonna have to double up on the pulleys down here, or I'll just have to figure out a way to make it work with one single belt. Uh, yes, there's, there's ways to do it. But, um, I don't know, looking at this, uh, <laughs> this is pretty extreme. But it might be something that I would consider just for a showpiece. I think one year in a car show would be kind of cool and just tool around on it once or twice. It's not going to be too much... Uh... No, it's really not going to be incredibly too much work. Although, because the engine is mounted the way I wanted to, putting in the rear, I'm thinking of this now. It does turn in the same clockwise direction, but because it has to go underneath the vehicle in that 3D fashion, as I said, because it doesn't just have a flat belt, it's going to have to turn one more. That essentially turns the transmission in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's gonna be clockwise here. Down here, it's gonna be counterclockwise because we've got everything turned around backwards. Um, the easy way to fix that, and this is not hard to do, unbolt the axle. Four bolts here, well, two bolts here, two on the other side, and turn the whole thing around backwards. My shift linkage would then have to move to the other side, and the shifter pivot point where the linkage attaches to would have to be, just coincidentally, on the opposite side of the shaft. So it would have to be on the top. So again, it is doable. There's already a, uh, <laughs> a lever there with a hole in it to attach to. So I mean, I could, could make this work. Might be an interesting showpiece. It won't happen in our car show this year, but there it is. Just proof of concept to see what it looks like. Um, let's drop this seat back down right here so you can get the full, full appearance. There it is, totally insane. I would hate to burn my elbow on one of the uh, headers. I would imagine if I did ride this thing, that would happen at least once before I'd understand. <laughs> I can always wrap some wrap around them, of course, and I'm sure somebody out there right now is screaming at me, saying, just wrap them. Yeah, well, we're not actually gonna put this thing on here right now. This is just for the people that always give me the crazy suggestions that wanted to see it. And looking at it, uh, wow, it's incredibly top heavy. It's definitely gonna need to be widened, and I don't know how well that axle is gonna hold all this weight, because essentially I've just, uh, I've doubled the load on here, because now you've got me, and I'm probably slightly overweight for this machine, and then you have this engine, and all that weight is on that rear axle. So, I don't know how well that puny little thing, which you can't even really see it. Yeah, there it is. I don't know how well that's going to uh, hold this thing up. It's only like a one inch axle or something. And I'm sure it's hardened steel, but even just looking at it here, the wheels look slightly negative cambered. So <laughs> maybe it's just an illusion because the frame is actually stretching out on the bottom. See how it's a little wider on the bottom versus the top? There was nothing welded in there to keep it square. So if I were to build this, I would have to reinforce the frame also. Cause again, it's just not, not designed for this. Another solution would be to get another transmission or just another axle and help to uh, cop some of the weight. I suppose that's doable. In that case, I would move this one forwards and put the other one right there. And then essentially it would be a six wheel vehicle and I might even be able to get it uh, four wheel drive, all four in the rear. Although they do have uh, open differentials on it. So I guess it would essentially be two wheel drive, only two on whichever side it chose to push on. <laughs> But it would stop the wheelies and it would solve the weight problem. I do have some other transaxles that I could stuff under. That one has a very simple, small, lightweight one. Or of course I could just stuff a solid axle under there, go-kart style, and uh, be done with it that way too. But there it is. You guys wanted it, you guys asked for it, you guys even demanded it. This is what you wanted to see. Now I've given it to you. Man, that's incredible. Hey Boomer, what you two doing?
<laughs> well, the rear mount shouldn't be too bad. I can get some uh, thick steel, you know, something eighth inch, maybe even quarter, if you really want to go nuts. And um, weld it flat up against the back of the frame here, drill a couple of holes for the oil pump, and uh, bolt it to the oil pump studs. Similar to what they did when they put a Type 1 engine into a Type 3. They essentially attached the uh, mustache bar to the oil pump here. Now this already has long studs on it, so that is a shoe and That makes it a whole lot easier to put this together. So that's possible. And on the other side, if I were going to do this here, I would mount uh, the steel again straight up and down and attach to the two lower bolts here. Um, as far as the starter is concerned, that might be a little tricky because, ow, caught my thumb. Not a whole lot of room in there. Not a whole lot of room at all. But I have seen people that uh, put a pull start, that's right, a pull start engine on their Volkswagen. And I would imagine I could probably do the same on here too if I really wanted to do that. And it might be an idea. The only problem I have with it is it does sit a little top heavy. And I think if I pull it, <laughs> I might roll the whole damn thing over. I don't know, let's see. Oh yeah, the whole thing moves when I pull on it. Uh, I think it, it, it might want to flip over, so I might have to have somebody sit on it before I start pulling. But <laughs> those are a couple of thoughts and ideas that I've got here when I get to this point. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens and see what the future brings. All right, well, it's horny beverage time. <laughs> well, over here, I decided, in my infinite wisdom, once I've got a little alcohol in me, it's probably a good place to mount a gas tank. So if I chose to put on some front fenders like I've just demonstrated on here, um, that might be how I do it. I don't think I'd choose that exact tank because it's just not stylish, but it's a great place to mount it. And it keeps this place empty. But for some reason, I don't like that cluttered up. I don't want to put the battery in there. I don't want to put the tank in there. Even though people have suggested that, that to me was just a very, very bad idea. It would just look ugly. And I want as much room as possible for me to move my feet and my legs and whatever around because, well, I'm a big fella. Somebody like a kid or something sitting on here probably won't be too big of a deal. I think I'm probably sitting a little too close to the steering wheel. I'd rather have the wheel uh, up a little higher and away from my legs, but, well, you got to piss with the dick you got. And this is what we got. And I'm just, just happy with... Yeah, I'm happy with everything. I really don't need to change much. I suppose I could cut and lengthen the shaft and move the angle of it, but I don't know if the... Uh, Universal joint and the steering would handle that, but yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna get into that. I am just happy with it as is. That engine is gonna go on first. We're gonna get this running and going because that was the original plan. And then we'll start making some adjustments. And uh, well, we're gonna get that engine running first and get this thing ready to go. And then once we're enjoying this thing and having some fun with it, then uh, then we'll consider what we're going to do with the Volkswagen engine, because that will be going on here at some point. It's ridiculous, yeah, but it's just going to be for demonstration purposes only, and we'll put it in the car show or what have you coming in uh, 2022. So that's about a year out. Hopefully by then I have the shop. It'll be a whole lot easier to do, and maybe even by then I'll just build another mo cart. <laughs> and <laughs> one of them will have the small engine, the other one will have the Volkswagen engine. But... You know, you guys forced me to do the body work, and I kind of like it. I really didn't want to do it yet, but um, I, this is fine. This is fine. I'm not going to complain. Front body work, however, yeah, we need to figure something out for that. I'm just not going to leave it as is. <laughs> it's not bad. It's really not a bad look. It kind of has a, a neat shape to it. It really does. I could put, like, a little hood in there, you know, and maybe I could even make a gas tank for it. I could hydroform it or something. Hey, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm looking at this again. No, foot, foot, leg, foot, leg room is going to be an issue because you look at where them foot pegs are and they're buried way underneath the fenders. So, yeah, it's not going to work. I suppose I could put a, some grip tape on here and put my heel on that and put the controls up here somewhere. But now I'm raising my feet and I think that's going to be awkward. I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, we're just going to stay away from that one. Okay, well, we're going to keep making some adjustments on this thing. I need to finish up the uh, foot controls. That's really the big thing. See if we can get something going to get the, um, the brakes working, the throttle, which will be easy, and, and then the clutch, which I demonstrated it working. It all fits underneath here in the little pulley system. This is the clutch apparatus. Really simple stuff. All it does is relieve the tension on the belt and 
It's real simple because it just simply pulls on it against the spring and moves the pulley out of the way so the belt slips. I need to get some guides put in for the belt so that way the belt stays in place, but we're pretty good. And then I gotta do some wiring on here. Then it should start up because we know the engine runs. I'm probably gonna change the carburetor because these carburetors are really designed for like single RPM use, you know, industrial purpose where you're just running that engine and it always stays at the same speed. They suck. I'm gonna put a small motorcycle car carburetor on there that allows me to adjust the speed on it. And I think I'll be happier with that in the long run as well. And I mentioned the exhaust. I'll put a couple of glass packs on there, but for now, this is a good solid exhaust. We know it works. There's no reason to dick with it. So leave it alone. Might do a wheelie bar or something if this thing really does turn into be a problem with wheelies, but I feel that it won't. And it's probably as easy as just adding some little skateboard wheels or something underneath the frame. We'll see what happens when I get that far. I also want to mount some kind of hinge on the seat and some kind of seat sliders. I would like the seat to be able to slide forwards and back. I think that would just be a really good idea for this. Just make things a little more practical for somebody big like me to be able to slide the seat back and somebody shorter to be able to move it forwards. And there's not a whole lot of room. Once everything is said and done, I have about that much space to slide it. So it goes, see, fist is about four and a half inches wide. So I'll have roughly four inches of extra space to slide the seat around if need be. And I think that would make a hell of a difference on this thing. Well, I guess that's it for now, so don't forget you guys, licky likey, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly so you get updates every time they upload a video. Crash is eating my trees again. Crash, are you eating my pepper plants? You're in trouble. Get away from there. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I've been whistling at her and then she started humping. Yeah. She started humping. Three and a half months old, she's already humping me. Unbelievable. <laughs> Anyways, thanks you guys for watching. We'll try to get up a ATVW. You notice I got that apart because I've been working on it a little bit too. That means there's another video in the process. So watch for that coming up in the coming weeks. And um, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.